Okay, in the last video, we were solving this problem. This is a quadratic equation. Our variable here is z, and it has complex number coefficients. And we worked through this solution, and there was one step in here I was going to come back and elaborate on. And that's this step right down here, where we have this square root of a complex number. And, and when we do this, we square root this complex number and we get this. We get another complex number. But how do you do that? How do you get from, the, from, from, from here to here? So I'm going to elaborate on that step first. The square root of 3 minus 4i. So let's think about this number. 3 minus 4i, well, that's 3 on the real axis and negative 4 on the imaginary axis. So 3 minus 4i is this point right here in the complex plane. And if we imagine this triangle, it's pretty easy to see that this side is length 3 and that side is length 4. So that side is going to be length 5. So let's just remember that length 5. And then let's think about this angle right here. Let's call it theta. Okay, one way to think about this is to imagine the complex number in polar form, which means it can be represented like this. Z is equal to some value r, which is going to be 5. We can imagine that as the radius of a circle right here. r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And theta is the theta as pictured in the diagram right there. Now, if we want to take z and raise it to a power, in this case, we're square rooting it. And square rooting something is the same as raising it to a power of 1 half. And when you have a complex number, and you want to raise it to a power, it's pretty easy to do if you express the complex number in polar form and raise it to a power using de Mavre's theorem. Which is a whole nother topic, but it makes some things really easy. To raise a complex number to a power, the value of r here is going to be raised by that power, raised to that power, and then the value of the angle theta is going to be multiplied by that power. And in this case, r is equal to 5. And theta, you can see, is the inverse tangent of 4 over 3, or really the negative inverse tangent of 4 over 3. Because we're rotating this way. Uh, not our normal counterclockwise rotation. So to apply to Mavra's theorem, we're going to try to find the square root of z, which is the same as z raised to the power of 1 half. So we can simply take the square root of 5 and cut the angle in half. And that puts us right here at this point, 2 on the real axis and negative 1 on the imaginary axis. And if you draw a little triangle there, and just look at the Pythagorean theorem, you can see that 2 squared plus 1 squared gives you 5. So that length right there is, in fact, the square root of 5. We took our 5 and just raised it to the 1 half. And you can show that this angle here really is half of this angle here. And you can show that using some trig identities uh, from this value of, of theta. Now note, though, that there's another way to interpret this point right here. We could think of a rotation in this direction. And if we cut that angle in half, keeping the same length of the square root of 5, we end up with this point right over here, which is directly opposite. And this is a negative 2 and a 1. And so when we square root this, we get two possible answers here. We get a 2 minus i, and we get negative 2 plus i. And you can also see this on the calculator. If you take a graphing calculator and you just do the square root of, and it's our number is 3 minus 4i, so we'll just type 3 minus 4, and then the i is the second function on the decimal key. The square root of 3 minus 4i, and you press enter, and there it is, 2 minus i. Now notice the calculator just gave us one of the two answers. It just gave us this one, but this one we can also see as a solution as well. So that was this step in our problem. The square root of 3 minus 4i is 2 minus i. Now let's also look at our answer here. We had two answers. 
3 and negative 1 plus 2i. Those answers should satisfy the original, original equation. That means if we take our original problem right here, we should be able to put in these values for z right here and right here, and it should work. It should work out to something that equals 0. So let's try the 3 first. This is our check here. We're just checking our answers to see if they work. First we'll do a 3. I'm going to rewrite this and plug in 3 for z. So this is 3 squared minus 2 plus 2i times 3 plus negative 3 plus 6i and hopefully that will equal 0. So let's do it. 9 minus 2 minus, oh wait actually we need to distribute the 3 here. So it's 9 minus 6 and then minus 6i we're distributing the 3 and that negative sign to get the minus 6i plus minus 3 plus 6i and does that equal 0? Well if we have a 9 and a minus 6 and a minus 3 those all cancel out and we have a minus 6i and a plus 6i and those cancel out so sure enough that ends up equaling 0. So 3 really is an answer to this and let's check our other answer as well. The other answer, the other solution was negative uh, 1 plus 2i. So let's rewrite our equation but we'll put in negative 1 plus 2i for z. So this is negative 1 plus 2i squared minus 2 plus 2i times negative 1 plus 2i plus negative 3 plus 6i and hopefully that will all work out to 0. So here let's work this out. This is going to be a 1 minus 4i plus 4i squared and then doing a FOIL here we get a let's I'll, I'll keep this negative sign out here for a second we get a minus 2 and then a plus 4i minus 2i plus 4i squared and then we have minus 3 plus 6i and that should all equal 0. Okay, Let's distribute this negative sign here 1 minus 4i I'm going to go ahead and change that to a minus 4, then we have a plus 2 minus 4i plus 2i minus 4i squared minus 3 plus 6i. Does that equal 0? Well the minus 4i squared here is just the same as plus 4 and then let's check all of this stuff out. We have a 1, a minus 4, that gives me a minus 3 plus 2 gives me a minus 1, plus 4 gives me a plus 3, minus 3 is 0, so all of the all of the real numbers actually do cancel out to 0, and let's see if our i's cancel out. We have a, a minus 4i and a minus 4i, so that's a minus 8i, and that cancels out with the plus 2i and the plus 6i, so all of those cancel out to 0, so that works. Those are our two answers. Three was one solution and negative 1 plus 2i was one solution and both of those do in fact satisfy our original equation.